Hi everyone, this is George Shell Soaps and I am getting ready to do a soap I have never done before. This is a brand new design. I'm doing Rainbow Sherbert and this fragrance is going to go on sale um, on Be Scented. It's going to be 16 ounces, one pound for $10 and that sale starts May 10th, 2018 and it's going to go until supplies last. So in honor of that, I thought I would just um, go ahead and do a rainbow themed soap. Um, I will tell you the colors that I used. I used red high heels for the red, I used the orange color, canary yellow, groovy green, blue skies, and then the pretty purple. Um, and this fragrance, it is, it behaves super well. Um, it does not accelerate, it doesn't tra it's trace fast, it does not rice, it's beautiful. Um, and it smells fantastic. Um, but the one thing, because I did want to have pretty straight lines, I decided that I wanted to do separate batches. So I had a couple different ways to try and figure out what the quickest and easiest way to do it because I don't have a lot of patience, um, but I also didn't want to screw it up. <coughs> so what I ended up doing was I'm using the diamond mold and so I used 15, 55 ounces of oil in that mold. So I went ahead and put all my oils, my sodium lactate, and my colloidal oatmeal and my kale and clay. So I put everything I pre-mixed it because when you get into like if I was going to do 55 ounces divided by six colors the amounts of the oils were going to get pretty small and so it's going to be a little bit difficult to measure out exactly precisely so I decided let me go ahead put everything in one big pot and then I'll split out the batter before I add the lye so that's what I did so I made one big batch of the oils and then I split that out into six parts so that when I went ahead and added the lye water. Now the lye water I did do separately, so I calculated the correct amount of lye for the smaller batches. So <clears throat> I was able to have enough time to work with it. So I pretty much essentially made like six mini batches. Um, and so I did the red layer first. Um, the red is gorgeous. The lighting's a little funny on the video, so it's not quite as red as it actually is in real life. Um, it looks a little bit pinker, but um, it's a gorgeous red. And you'll see when I do the cut, you'll see that the red really does stand out and pop. Um, so this was the first layer. I used the red high heels color from Be Scented and first layer down, five more to go. And so here I am, I'm back. I am now doing the canary yellow color. Um, again, you can see the fragrance, it behaves very well. Um, you don't want to over, when you're trying to do these really um, exact layers and you want them to be pretty precise, you don't want to pour too thick, otherwise it might not even out. So you want to make sure that your batter is still very, very fluid, but you need to make sure that the first layer that you put down is pretty um, set up already. So the one mistake I made when I do do the cut, and you'll see that, is that I probably could have waited three or four extra minutes in between each layer because I had a couple areas where it did kind of pop through the bottom just a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, and I think I said canary yellow. This is the orange layer, obviously, red, orange, yellow. So this is the orange color. It's super, super cool. I love it. I use it in a lot of different soaps. Um, so I did the orange layer here and you'll see me pour it in just a moment but again like you, what I would recommend is waiting a little bit longer in between layers just to make sure that nothing breaks through but if you also use the spatula it does help kind of break the falls so if it is not quite perfect you're not going to force the top layer into the bottom layer And here I am, I am on the third 
layer, the third batch as you would call it, and this is definitely the canary yellow. It's a pretty vibrant yellow. Um, it's more of a neon, but it looks really great in the rainbow soap. So again, here I am, this is just the third layer. Three more to go after this. And this is one of my favorite colors I use for the green. It's groovy green. It's very neon. 
Um, but if you add a little bit of TD, you can definitely tone down the brightness of it and it's still very, very pretty. I think maybe next time I do this soap, I'll add a little bit of TD to each of the layers. Um, maybe not the red. Add a little bit of TD and make it a little bit more pastel-y. Um, but again, this is one of my favorite green colors. Super, super fun. And here we are, fifth layer. This is the blue skies. Um, and because I probably could have used the blue color, the blue color is more in line with the neons. Um, but I don't know, I was just, I wanted to do the blue skies, so I just wanted to add a little bit more um, to make it really pop. Um, it, this can be a little bit of a lighter color, which is really, really pretty, but in order to get the right color, I did add a little bit more of the blue skies. It comes out really, really nice once it is cut and cured.
And sorry about the camera angle before anyone comments below. Um, I wasn't paying attention, but again, this was the fifth layer and it was trying to be super, super precise yet move fast enough. So I apologize for the layer, but you can still see what's really going on. And last but not least, layer six. This is the pretty purple color. Super, super pretty. And again, you can see the batter is behaving fabulous. It's not accelerating, it's not tracing. It's just behaving very, very well. So that is good to know. And it's easy to do this kind of soap with this batter because you know it's not gonna accelerate, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the purple and then I will bring you guys back for the cut.
All right, guys, I broke my cardinal rule. I usually do not unmold until 24 hours. What I do with the diamond and sapphire molds that I use from Bee Scented, I pop them in the oven. Um, I put them in for, I just put them in the oven and I let them sit there for 24 hours. But I was so excited to cut this to see how the layers came out that I decided to unmold after 12 hours. And what happened was I lost one of the corners. You'll see the very end piece that I'd cut um, after I'm done with this section. The red came off so I kind of just stuck it back on but it's my sample size so it's just the sample end piece so it's not that big of a deal I wasn't too upset about it but I should have waited but again I was I'm never that excited to cut soap I kind of like all right I've cut you know thousands of batches of soap not a big deal but this one I was excited just because of the time and you can see um, there are a couple of spots where it did dip um, the orange layer just wasn't quite ready or I poured the yellow a little too high so not a big deal. Overall, super impressed. No one, you know, I think soapers are critical of themselves and, you know, another soap will say, ah, she screwed this up. But I think the average customer would be like, that's a pretty cool soap. So no harm, no foul on that. But all in all, I was super excited with how this came out and it smells fantastic. Um, during the cut, you can definitely smell the fragrance. It's super strong. And again, just this is maybe my new favorite soap. I think I'd love to do some more of the line soaps they just take so long to make um it probably takes an additional 30 minutes maybe to do it this way so the results come out fantastic but it is pretty time consuming but anyway thanks for watching and you can see that last end piece uh the red fell off but i'll just keep that bar for myself and use it so anyway thanks so much have a great day